Hello everyone, welcome to Students Point. This is 13th of August and today each question is very important. So pay your attention till the end. And to get PDF of all these videos, you can join us on Telegram by writing the channel's name like this. You can also follow us on Instagram by writing the username, the Students Point. Let's begin. But if you are finding this video useful, don't forget to like the video and do share the video with your friends and loved ones. So let's begin now. But first we will see a question and everyone has to try to answer this question in the comment section. The question is, which state is to launch Indra Van Mitan Yojana? These are the options. Read the options carefully and then answer it. Let's begin the first question now. The world's first COVID-19 vaccine to get regulatory approval is, so it is a Sputnik 5. Here C is the right answer. And Russia has named this newly approved vaccine as a Sputnik 5 in the reference to a Sputnik 1. Sputnik 1 was world's first artificial satellite which was launched in the year of 1957 during space race between erstwhile USSR and US. And Russia's vaccine candidate is an adenovirus based viral vector vaccine which is combined with a spike protein of SARS-CoV-2 virus to induce an immune response in human body. The vaccine has been developed by Moscow's Gamelia Institute in collaboration with Russia's Defense Ministry. And there are six stages of vaccine development. The first one is exploratory stage. The second one is preclinical stage, then clinical stage, then regulatory review and approval, manufacturing and quality controls. So questions are raised on a Sputnik 5 vaccine as it has not cleared the clinical development trial. It includes three phases. Clinical development has three phases, which are phase one, phase two, phase three. In phase one, few people are injected with the vaccine, while in phase two, few hundred people are injected with this vaccine. And in phase third of clinical trial, thousands of people are tested with the vaccine. However, this Sputnik 5 has only cleared phase one and phase two of clinical trial, not even phase third. So there are questions that this might not be as effective as Russia is claiming. Next question now, Ardu Atoll or Sinu Atoll in news recently is located in, so it is located in Maldives. So here B is the right answer. And this is a map. This is at the southernmost of Maldives. If we zoom it, it looks like this, Adol Atoll. It was in news because India and Maldives signed a contract for development of five ecotourism zones in Ardu Atoll of island nation. And it is the southernmost atoll of Maldives and Ardu Atoll together with Fua Mulla located 40 km north of Ardu Atoll extend the Maldives into southern hemisphere. So Maldives is in northern hemisphere largely but this Ardu Atoll along with Fua Mulla lies in the southern hemisphere. Next question now. International Youth Day 2020 is being observed on so it is being observed on 12th of August. So here B is the right answer. The theme for this year is Youth Engagement for Global Action. And United Nations General Assembly in the year of 1999 endorsed the recommendation made by World Conference of Ministers responsible for youth based in Lisbon from 8 to 12 of August 1998 that 12th of August will be declared as International Youth Day. And the very first International Youth Day was observed in the year of 2000. The objective of the day is to celebrate young people's initiative as well as their meaningful engagement. And only few days are left for the offer to subscribe to this monthly kind of test series with the discounted price. The price has been discounted to rupees 200 for three months. It, the offer will be valid only till 15th of August. The price for six months has been reduced from 420 to 385. So now you can subscribe to this test series only at just rupees 385 till 15th of August. And after subscribing, you have to send your confirmation at point student 2020 at the rate gmail.com. How you will subs subscribe? You have to press on the link which I will provide in the comment section as well as in the description box. Tap on the link, choose your plan and then subscribe. Those who are unaware of it, let me tell you, we do organize test series every month on 15th of every month and afterwards. The test is organized which covers each topics of polity, economy, international news, science and technology, environment, history and culture. Small topics like awards, indices, personalities and sports based questions are covered in miscellaneous. The test covers all the current affairs questions along with all the additionals and the related topics which can be asked in your examinations. The test will play a crucial role in ensuring your selections in the early attempts of your examinations. Next question now. 
consider the following statements about Hindu's women's ancestral right. The Supreme Court has expanded the Hindu woman's right to be the copper caner, which means joint legal hire and inherit ancestral property on terms equal to male hires. This is correct. See, historically, women were denied right to property as male of the family was considered to be the hire of ancestral property. But since the passage of Hindu Succession Act 2005, women were also getting the right to inherit their property. So now Supreme Court again has enhanced this right and Supreme Court has allowed women to inherit ancestral property on equal terms to male hires. The judgment pertains to Hindu Succession Amendment Act 2005. So here both of these statements are correct. C is the right answer. And it ruled that a Hindu woman's right to be a joint hire to the ancestral property is by birth and does not depend on whether her father is alive or not. This means that father does not need to be living as on 9th of September 2005 when the Hindu Succession Act was enacted. However, despite passage of this act that was Hindu Succession Act 2005 in the name of love, family still deny women the right to property, right to hire their ancestral property. It also directed high courts to dispose of cases involving this issue within six months since they would have been pending for years. Next question now, Rattle Hydroelectric Plant is being developed over, so it is being developed over Chenav River. So here A is the right answer and it is being constructed in Kistwar district of Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. The project includes a 133 meter tall gravity dam and two power stations adjacent to one another. It was initiated in 2013 by Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. And it was in news because India has refused a request by Pakistan to hold a meeting on issues around the Indus Water Treaty, especially to solve differences on technical aspects governing the construction of rattle run of the river, in short called as ROR project on the Chenab River. So what is the issue or what was the Indus Water Treaty? See, Indus Water Treaty was signed between Prime Minister Nehru of India and President of Pakistan, Ayub Khan. The treaty was signed over the use of Indus River system. So the treaty said that eastern flowing rivers which were Satluj, Ravi and Bias, this will be used by India while the western flowing rivers which were Indus, Jhelum and Chenab will largely be used by Pakistan. However, a portion of these rivers can also be used by India, but it will largely be used by Pakistan. And the treaty also allowed India to build ROR projects on three western rivers, which were Chenab, Jhelum, and Indus, provided that it does not substantially impede water flow in Pakistan downstream. So since the construction of this dam, Pakistan has been saying that it violates the Indus Water Treaty However, please note that Indus Water Treaty is considered to be the one of the most successful treaty over riverine disputes or distribution of river water. And it has been successful since the passage of treaty in 1960-61. Next question now. Depsang Plain in news recently is located in, so it is located in the Union Territory of Ladakh. So here B is the right answer. The Epsang Plains along with Pangong Shou are two major areas of concern in the ongoing standoff along the line of actual control in Eastern Ladakh. During the 1962 Chinese War, Indo-Chinese War, China occupied the plains and in 2013 Chinese troops came 19 km inside. There is heavy Chinese presence at crucial area called as Bulge in the Epsang Plains and the Epsang Plains is also close to Karakoram Pass overlooking the very strategic locations which were Saltoro Ridge and Siachen Glacier. So this Depsang Plain has lot of strategic importance for India. And recently India and China have held talks at the major general level to discuss issues concerning the strategic Depsang Plains. Next question now. Consider the following statements about transparent taxation honoring the honest. Let's see. It is a further step towards direct tax reforms. The statement is correct. The initiative is to be launched by Prime Minister Modi. This is also correct. So here both of the statements are correct. C is the right answer. And Central Board of Direct Taxes has carried out several major attempts to reform direct taxation in the country. For instance, last year, corporate tax rates were reduced from
from 30% substantially to 22%. For new manufacturing units, the rates were further reduced to 15%, which is quite attractive. And dividend distribution tax has also been abolished. And Vivaat Seviswas Act 2020 was also launched to resolve direct taxes. And if you have not liked the video yet, do like it and do share the video with your friends and loved ones. Next question now. Montreal Convention of 1999 in news recently is related to so it is related to airlines liabilities so here B is the right answer and Montreal Convention of 1999 establishes airline liability in the case of death or injury to pa passengers as well as in case of delay damage or loss of baggage and cargo Montreal Convention of 1999 designed to be a single universal treaty to govern airline liabilities around the world and it was in news because the crash of Air India Express plane at Kojikur on August 7th could make airline liable to pay compensation of rupees 1.19 crore per passenger in case of death or bodily injury according to the Charter of Passenger Rights notified by central government in February last year. So I hope you find the video useful. Do share and do like the video. Subscribe and press the bell icon. Wait for the upcoming video. Until then, stay safe. And thanks for watching.